Ja, äh, willkommen. Schön, dass Sie so zahlreich erschienen sind. Wir machen ein bisschen sentimentalen Zeitsprung in unsere Anfänge, auch unsere Freundschaft und ähm, auch die Bechtler Stiftung, da hattet ihr ja mal ein Atelier in, in der Firma Luva, die irgendwie äh, übergegangen ist oder zum Bechtler äh, Imperium, kann man sagen, <lacht> gehörte und da habt ihr vermutlich auch damals noch diese Arbeiten entwickelt in, in eurem Luva Atelier. Ja, das, das ist so. Äh, muss ich hier... Ge ist, ja, ist gut so. Ähm, wir haben ganz am Anfang äh, hatten David und ich gar kein Atelier. Äh, wir, haben eigentlich, wir hatten so halt Projekte. Das erste Projekt haben wir gemacht äh, in, in der Wohnung von David. Das war die Wurstserie. Und äh, weil wir eigentlich gar nicht diesen Plan hatten, zusammen zu arbeiten, überhaupt zu arbeiten. <lacht> ähm, und dann, hat, dann hatte man einfach diese Projekte und dann hat man die irgendwie versucht, irgendwo zu, reali irgendwo zu realisieren. Und äh, haben wir uns dann einfach äh, Studios äh, für kurze Zeit angefragt. Aber dann äh, kam dann der Moment, wo und hat uns Ruhe die Bechtler hat uns dann angeboten in der in der Luva in, in Altstädten diese Fabrik die war schon bereit so ein bisschen so am runterfahren und da gab es viele freie Räume und äh, ja dort haben wir auch diese Sorlis gemacht mhm. ja und dort haben wir auch den erst, die erste Version vom äh, ähm, wie heißt der der Film mit der Kettenreaktion. <lacht> der Lauf der Dinge. Genau, genau. Ja. Der Kinderzimmer-Hit. Ja, genau. 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 Ja. Ähm, ja, so. Äh, und ja, vor allem mit Rudi waren wir so. Ähm, er, er war natürlich auch viel Kameranausstellungen. Äh, und dann. Und dann so haben wir Thomas kennengelernt und äh, sie gehörten auch zu den Ersten, äh, die den Mut hatten, von uns Kunst zu kaufen. <lacht> äh, ja, so ist das. Mhm. Ja, ich weiß, dass äh, am Anfang äh, war die seriöse Kunstwelt, die fanden euch lustig, aber äh, es war einfach lustig und fertig. Und äh, Kunst, ja, die Frage hat man haben sich gewisse Leute damals nicht gestellt, aber ja. Ja, es ist ja klar, das ist am Anfang äh, vielleicht so nicht auf einen Widerstand gestoßen. Der Widerstand war eigentlich eher so in Form, eben wie du jetzt gesagt hast, von äh, nicht äh, ernst nehmen. Nicht ja. ernst nehmen oder das, ja. Aber da haben wir uns. Genau, und doch, ah, jetzt, wir, haben wir nicht, nehmen das wir ernst. Haben, wir jetzt. haben das nicht ernst genommen, dass die uns nicht ernst nehmen. Okay. <lacht> <lacht> Gut, ja, gehen wir jetzt in Medias Res. Ich meine, wir haben hier eine wunderbare Ausstellung, auch wenn sie im Düstern, im Dunkeln stattfindet oder gerade deshalb. Es hat viel Zauber. Ähm, und sie heißt Zurli, auch ein bisschen Kinderzimmermäßig. Und ähm, ich habe hier äh, ein Bild besorgt mit einer mysteriösen Maschine. Willst du gerade ein bisschen erzählen aus der Küche, wie ist das entstanden, diese geometrischen, wunderbaren Formen in äh, äh, also die, diese Lichtspuren im Dunkeln? Also die die Ausstellung heißt nicht Zurli. Die ah, Ausstellung, ja, Ausstellung heißt, äh, du hast dich sehr schlecht vorbereitet. Bin nicht, bin nicht. Ruheloses Universum. Ich habe sogar den englischen Titel in a restless world. Ja, genau, ja. genau. Also ein ruheloses Universum. Das war, ähm, das war ein, ein Titel von einem Essay, der Patrick Frei geschrieben hat. Ähm, für die Ausstellung, unsere erste große institutionelle Ausstellung, das war in der Kunsthalle Basel. Und er hat einen sehr schönen Essay geschrieben äh, mit dem Titel Ein Ruhe, ruheloses Universum. 
Und später hatten wir dann eine Ausstellung im Walker Art Museum in Minneapolis. Und dort haben wir dann ja, diesen doch großen Anspruch auf das ganze Universum haben wir ein bisschen runtergeschraubt und haben es genannt in a restless world. Ja. Aber es geht eigentlich um dieses Moment äh, der Unruhe. Mhm. Ähm, und World ist nicht Universum, aber hier stimmt es eigentlich. Genau, genau. Und dann fand ich das eigentlich, äh, fand ich das einen schönen Titel jetzt für, für diese Ausstellung. Die, die zwei Arbeits, äh, Arbeiten, die drin sind, sind das eine sind Ratte und Bär in diesen Vitrinen. Ähm, und das andere sind eben die Surli. Ja. 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 Genau, und jetzt sehen wir hier so eine äh, merkwürdige Meccano-Geschichte, äh, oder? Die, diese Maschine. Ja, ähm, das war, es war in dieser Zeit, wo ähm, gerade nachdem, äh, dass wir fast zwei Jahre ja. lang am, äh, am Kettenreaktionfilm gearbeitet haben, äh, sind wir dann, äh, hatten wir irgendwie weil es war immer so, im, die Welt selbst herstellen und im Atelier drin sein und ich glaube, da gab, es gab dann ein, ein Bedürfnis nach frischer Luft und äh, dann haben wir begonnen, sehr viel zu fotografieren und sind einfach, haben so Ausflüge gemacht und haben äh, eigentlich begonnen mit dieser Arbeit, die dann später sichtbare Welt wurde. Und es war die, diese Idee irgendwie wie so eine aufgeweichte Form von den Situationisten, ne travaille jamais, also dass du eigentlich die Nichtarbeit zur Arbeit erklärst. Und, ähm, und der Künstler, der eigentlich sein Atelier verlässt und, und, und sich die Welt anschaut, weil das ist ja das, was du verpasst, wenn du, wenn du im Atelier bist und an deiner Kunst arbeitest, dann äh, hast, du, hast du nicht diese Aufmerksamkeit oder Zeit. Und das war so diese, diese Form von... von äh und doch, man erwartet ja, dass die Kunst sogenannt welthaltig ist. Genau, genau. Und so haben wir dann begonnen mit diesen, mit diesen, mit diesen Fotografien und da gab es äh, verschiedene Kategorien. Und äh, wir haben dann irgendwann mal, haben wir natürlich versucht, dieses Repertoire der, der Fotografie so weit als möglich zu fassen und dachten dann irgendwann mal an diese an abstrakte Fotografien. Und äh, ich weiß noch, wir waren in, äh, in Rio de Janeiro und haben dort Zuckerhut und all diese Sachen. Wir waren wegen der Biennale da, waren wir eingeladen. Und, äh, und da hat so ein Straßenverkäufer, der hat so, so, so ein Lichtspiel, das man so in die Luft werfen kann. Und das hat dann so, so diese Formen und das hat uns so gefallen und so. Und, ah, und wir wollten es fotografieren, aber das ging natürlich nicht, mit, mit, weil, ja, musst du, weil das bewegt sich in der Luft. Und, und, äh, und dann haben wir, als wir zurück waren in Zürich, haben wir gedacht, ah, ja, die, die waren so schön und so, was könnte man machen? Ähm, und, äh, und dann haben wir diese Maschine konstruiert. Zuerst, die ersten Versuche waren ganz primitiv. Da haben wir einfach so eine Taschenlampe, diese Militärtaschenlampen, wo man so rotes oder grünes Licht und haben da eine Schnur, haben das, ja genau, von dem und haben das eine Schnur gebunden und haben das einfach so in der Luft dann gedreht, aber dann kriegst du eigentlich ja nur immer den Kreis mhm. äh, und, und einfach so Langzeitung, Langzeitbelichtungen gemacht und von da sind wir dann auf diese Maschine gekommen, dass wir das so an einem, an einem mit Mekanoteile, das ist so ein, ein Kinder für für meistens Knaben spielen mit diesem technischen, heute nicht mehr so, aber es war populär, ähm, diese Meccano. Und da haben wir eine, es ist wie so eine Uhr mit einem Zeiger und außen an der Uhr hat es nochmals ein Zeiger. Und das ist so mit Ketten verbunden und da musste einer musste drehen an dieser, an dieser Maschine und dann haben wir auf, an diesem Zeiger haben wir verschiedene kleine Lämpchen. Äh, äh, angemacht 
Einer stand dann oben und hat das von oben zu so schräg oben fotografiert und der andere hat die Maschine gedreht. Das Schöne daran war, wir wussten eigentlich nicht, was wir für Bilder kriegen. Also die krieg du fotografierst etwas, das du nicht siehst. Also so im Gegenteil, wenn du diese Fotos, die wir eben von in Rio de Janeiro du, und du machst, du fotografierst den Zuckerhut oder in Paris den Eiffelturm, du siehst, den Eif du siehst, was du fotografierst. Und das war natürlich schon sehr schön, dass du etwas machst, das du eigentlich nicht siehst und dann erst auf der Fotografie ja. sichtbar wird. Also, ähm, ja. ich, jetzt habe ich einen Ordnungsantrag, weil ich sehe Wade Guide und dort hinten, kann der Deutsch? No, he don't speak German. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, uh, we will now switch into English. Thank you. <laughs> Is this okay for you? Yeah. yeah? <laughs> okay, also, uh, welcome we, again. We, we're not going to repeat what we said <laughs> <No>. before. <laughs> we just go on you in might, English. You might be happy that you could explain all the technique in German. <laughs> Well. Mit der Rede und so. <laughs> okay, so, yes, um, I think you should now also say uh, something about abstract photography. Yeah, I mean, it was all, all these photographs that we did back then were like very inspired of being like not creative. Uh, like we wanted to make all these this photographs, they already exist or like everybody is doing. So when people are going to Cairo, everybody is taking mm -hmm. a photograph of the pyramids. Mm -hmm. And we were like interested like in this, uh, uh, this kind of, you could, s on one side they are cliches, but they are also archetypes. So they have like this, this both sides of being full and empty and uh, so we, we, we took all this, the palms and, and with, with the abstract photography we also wanted to do something that is already like what you have as a cliché of an abstract photography. And when you look uh, back on photography in the 20s or the 30s, uh, Bauhaus photography, mm -hmm. there were Uh, uh, like Richter and also the movies, mm. they were Moholy Nudge. Moholy Nudge. And um, <coughs> so uh, there was al already like these kind of photographs. So in a way to make this again. And uh, also we were like very interested in uh, what we said before, uh, the phenomena of upsinkungsprozess, mm -hmm. the descending, um, um, the descending um, phenomena that like when it's uh, a cultural, good, cultural, a cultural descent, yeah. so like the moment when... From when the high strata to a lower strata. Yes, yes, yeah. like yeah. When, when, when Kandinsky paintings in the 50s yeah. became yeah. Uh, patterns on uh, wall patterns for I, pretty I bourgeois. I think the French have a, a, a name, they call it vulgarisation, which is yeah. not negative uh, because... It yeah, yeah, they even have the, uh, the nice uh, haute vulgarisation. Uh, I like uh, that uh, one. <laughs> 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 that's like, yeah. uh, that's the higher form of vulgarisation, <laughs> the haute vulgarisation. <laughs> So this is a little bit old vulgarization because it talks about high art, yeah, <laughs> and like working like with this, um, with these kind of transitions was also something that um, was a form of looking at things that uh, postmodern thinking provoked very much, mm -hmm. and. Uh, And yeah, a good example is also, as we said before, is Sigmar Polke, which you maybe know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like his painting, Abstrakte Kunst, where he made like a parody of an abstract painting, but then he made like the parody so good that it was also against the parody itself. Mm -hmm. So in a way that, that you, uh, 
you you just not make this. It, otherwise, it's a, a sock gas. It's mm -hmm. a dead end street, and uh, so to reanimate something that is mm -hmm. that is dead, and then but like that that yeah, but then this, that zombie. Uh, <laughs> has a certain vital <laughs> <laughs> yes and it's oh, the humor itself is something which brings vitality into the thing because yeah. uh, it's something direct and uh, it's vital and uh, uh, at the same time yes the form i'm uh, thinking of sigmar polk's uh, moderne kunst he makes all the movement the spiral and the spot uh, and writes um, moderne Kunst on top. It's all the cliches of people, what they think modern art is, and also of the old guys who are stuck in a repetition and uh, the forms which were uh, revolutionary ones become hollow. You know? But yeah. then you look at moderne Kunst and as you say, the spiral is so elegantly made and the spot at the right place and it's uh, the purple there and the black and the yellow. It's, it's still a wonderful painting, but it's, it's yeah. a parody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But with the Surly there is also this other moment that is like a little bit like what the Surrealist uh, called the Écriture Automatique, that you make the machine makes the makes the drawing, and in a way, you just you are the creator of that machine. But then, like the product uh, is kind of it's, it's product a, of chance, also. Of, of chance, and also we were think, in the beginning we were like really had the project to make like one or two of these surlis, like perfect ones, but then. Just like uh, the failures looked so nice, and um, and often also because the machine was uh, very much like bricolage, uh, not so perfectly made, not just out of sloppiness maybe. Uh, but then when you turn the machine, the the, the schwung, schwingkraft. Like the, just like the lamps went out of there, uh, and just yeah, then they, they were like then the freaks. And in the beginning, we well, be you have suddenly a, a, like a, a corner and a, an egg. Yeah, in this a, is when yeah. when when before they fall off. You know, mm -hmm. then when you yes. when when you turn it like yeah. really fast, then sometimes they they, f they were falling off. And of course, they also, that's why the, 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 the restless universe, they are also like all this image that you see uh, on um, how the planets are turning in mm -hmm. the universe. It's, um, so on the same time, there is something that you do. Um, uh, it has like this kind of uh, Kinderzimmer. Mm -hmm. uh, Aesthetic, but on the other side, it's 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 very pretentious to make an image of the universe <laughs> that you can do that like this. Um, yeah, so it has. And I think we uh, moved to this. We had already this picture because uh, it's somehow related. It has also to do. It's called Son et Lumière or, or uh, Le Rayon Vert. Mm -hmm. The rayon vert is this phenomena when you when the sun sets and you are on the seashore and uh, the very last moment when the sun sinks behind the horizon, you might see a, 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 a green light flash uh, of a, a split second. Mm -hmm. And this is called Le Rayon Vert. Yeah. It's very rare to see because probably it needs a, a specific angle or uh, atmospheric situation. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> so Le Rayon Vert or um, Son et Lumière, I think that was something, uh, events in the 60s um, in cities where... I, uh, I mean, we, we 
took the title from, from a, a film of Eric Romer. And uh, there is a scene. Le Rayon Vert. Le Rayon yeah. Vert. Yeah. And there is a scene um, where a young girl from Paris, she goes uh, to holidays somewhere in the south of France, or I don't, yeah, somewhere. And then uh, she sits on a bench and, um, and watches the sun going down. And there is an older, an older couple. And then the man explains to his wife this for name or not, that you now explain to the public. <laughs> and she's there and, um, and, um, and at least she never heard about it. And then uh, this couple go away and then her date is coming and she's just like repeating what. <laughs> 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 so in a way, this is also, you know, like yeah, how, how you, uh, this kind of appropriation, how it's exactly. called <laughs> uh, in art, also happens in real life. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and why Sans et Lumière? Because, uh, because this was like mm, uh, a lot of these places we went for, for making these photographs, uh, like the pyramids in Cairo, uh, for, because they like tourism has always the feeling that they have to add something, that the pyramids, that's not enough. <laughs> you know, you have to do something and you, and you have to make, in the evening you make a light show and uh, yeah, you put like colored light on the pyramid yeah. and some music to make it more attractive, these boring pyramids. <laughs> and, uh, and you can see this in many tourist places and yeah, it was like... But no, nowadays they do it with uh, Van Gogh, you know? <laughs> that's, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, with yeah. Uh, high technology and uh, I don't know if it, what kind of music, I've seen one, I don't have the courage to see actually uh, the Van Gogh ones. We can go one day. <laughs> one day maybe. <laughs> but I saw uh, Salvador Dali uh, one um, and they had Pink Floyd. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But I I, I... I think I wait till they do one on Mondrian. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's easy. Uh, boogie boogie. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Yes, uh, I put Van Gogh here, do you uh, can imagine, because it's dark, it's a magic of night and lights. It's very elementary. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the Arl version, there is also the Saint-Rémy version. And these are also have to do a bit with the idea of surlis, you know, and physical phenomena. Uh, and the magic of light. I mean, uh, and Van Gogh wrote in in a letter, uh, which is related to his, these two paintings, that he wants to go out at night, and uh, he's disappointed, uh, of course, of religion and uh, church anyway, but he might find something which is a bit like religion and okay. he, he wants to paint that. Yeah, yeah. So I know you do everything to not be mystical or metaphysical, but uh, how do you see that? Well, uh, <laughs> then we, then, I mean, one of the tricks that we did is like inventing alter egos who are doing this for us. And this would be red and bare, and uh, and like when, when you have an alter ego, then yeah, you can do that, and you and uh, in a way, it's always it's you can you can deal better with the schizophrenia uh, that you have with these kind of pathetic mm -hmm. topics. <laughs> because uh, uh, yeah, I feel very schizophrenic about them, or like maybe not schizophrenic, but uh, like uh, full of doubts, but still attracted. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, this was then, then often uh, the, this yeah. trick, you know, yeah. that uh, yeah. that um, of course Van Gogh 
was like doing it very direct, but for mm -hmm. us it's it's hard to do that, to yeah. to believe fully in that yeah. or or we see we just see the the kitsch aspect in it. Mm -hmm. But that's also the prob it's the problem when you become like uh, like too like critical or see like a kitsch aspect. And kitsch is a bourgeois uh, category, Peter, yeah, don't yeah. you think so? I, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and uh, but then but then also you you also at the same at the same moment when you just see like a rainbow or a sunset and say oh that's kitsch and then you also you miss something you know yeah, there are many sunset uh, pictures in your, in your works yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah i actually um, had to think about moholy Arch and everything but I also had to think about Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, it's not just modernism or postmodernism. <laughs> you know, uh, Leonardo many. I mean, I take, the... I can take all misunderstandings <laughs> as long as they are flattering me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you are you ready for Leonardo? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking about. Uh, uh, analysis of uh, of whirling water or or whirling uh, uh, air uh, in in the clouds, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. cosmic uh, world. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. all already in uh, Leonardo's film. Yeah. yeah, but we don't we don't have to go back to Renaissance. No, no. I mean, <laughs> we can uh, move on. I, I had uh, yeah, Munch and Calder. Calder is, um, uh, this is very nice uh, gouache, it's called Saucers in Black. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> it could be Fishley Weiss, no? Yeah, uh, it, it, I have um, a really nice story for this because like, um, uh, I, I, David and I, we always really liked this a lot. And there was like, um, um, I think, David bought even like this print mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, it was somewhere in our studio and uh, it was hanging in the studio and we often looked at it and, and we said this is like uh, art, this is, you can't do something that is better than this. <laughs> but of course it was also, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's a yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. I had found something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but actually, yes. But you Calder, Calder itself is a little bit also this this problem of like of upsinkungsprozess, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and um, yeah, it's difficult uh, to. Uh, I mean, I like it, but he is also. Coming kind of like the the cliche of like abstract fifties art or something, and um, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> but the gouaches are just all I mean, of them are fantastic. I mean, the super colors, bright, the, super the, the bright. bright. Yeah, yeah, super yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we don't need. Uh, um, a multiple of a mobile, maybe, but uh, it, yeah. it's still there. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you had a show at Bayer Foundation. Yeah. Alexander Calder, mm -hmm. Fishley Weiss. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. was that? About ten years ago. Uh, no, I think seven years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, this this was uh, Theodora Fischer had this yeah. idea. Yeah. Uh, it was. Uh, and then I was thinking, yeah, why not? <laughs> so, of course, I was thinking of the darkness, because when you look at uh, this book, which is like um, the, list, the list of you, what you had done in the moment when we worked together on the retrospective. Yes. And it's wonderfully or ordered um, uh, because you made a lot of series 
You, mm -hmm. you worked in series a lot, mm -hmm. but uh, the series are connected um, like branches of a tree uh, they, and they come back and you get uh, yeah, back uh, in time and uh, then continue with, with the theme. You had uh, worked on 10 years ago or so. And uh, if, I, if you look through this book, many, many uh, nightscapes, many, many pictures are taken in the dark, even of sculptures or the airports, or many which are or in twilight. Yeah. yeah. And uh, for instance, I mean, the like questions. What, what you said about like, these categories, this was like maybe in, in the first big work that I did with David uh, in suddenly this overview, this was already something like an encyclopedia or like, and we, uh, before we started to make these clay figures, we all, we started with having uh, categories like would be entertainment, sport, history, uh, private stories, invented stories, uh, fairy tales. So we already had like this kind of uh, uh, system or encyclopedia and uh, this was then maybe also a model for what we all did later. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I mean, it, it, if you talk about like darkness or the night and all this, it doesn't have to be literally just like because it's dark like here. Mm -hmm. Like it, for example, in, uh, in uh, suddenly this overview, there was once called just strangers in the night exchanging blank, <laughs> glances. Yeah. So the Frank Sinatra song, yeah. you know. So like, yeah, and this is maybe also. Uh, <laughs> yes, but for instance, there's a sculpture of the animal, the big animal in clay. Mm -hmm. The photograph is also in twilight, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but probably because you didn't want to, to look it like a standard art photography. Which, something which, use, on which a, one? Oh, um, wait. Tosta? Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is just like for escaping a little bit the installation photography, the classic exactly. installation on photography. A, something on a pedestal. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, how how to deal with the white cube, mm -hmm. make it a black yeah. cube. <laughs> <laughs> switch out the lights. <laughs> it's like yeah. yeah, switching out the lights but of the white cube. That's somehow. Uh, operatic trick uh, to, to, to make a distance, to, to distance yourself from something like standard art photography or, yeah, or yeah. something else like we have here for instance, the photographias, oh sorry, the, here, the photographias you took uh, pictures of uh, uh, paintings which were not done by you, mm -hmm. anonymous painters probably, in mm -hmm. uh, fair, uh, art, uh, fun fairs. Fun fairs, yeah. And you took black and white slide film, mm -hmm. but made prints, colored prints after the black and white slides, uh, slides which is like a, a two steps away from the colored image, yeah. I think. So it's also a distancing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, with, with this, it, it came a little bit like, um, the idea came like from different sides. One was, it was really at the end, uh, when we were getting tired of doing visible world, because you, you just, at a certain, when you do photography, you realize that you always bump on that wall of the visible. You can't really go behind that wall. Uh, you, can, you can go behind that wall of the visible, like when you do abstract photographs, like mm -hmm. the Surly, but still you, you, <laughs> you have something that is visible in the end. Uh, but you can't really go like 
let's say, what we call the world of dreams or imagination. Mm -hmm. And um, um, <coughs> so by, by making photographs of of uh, of these uh, these kind of um, airbrush paintings, they often deal like with dreams, nightmares. Uh, in the beginning, mostly we took it from ghost rides, and uh, so this was also uh, just like to enlarge uh, the territory of photography. Mm -hmm. So yeah. But to go on with. Um with the darkness, because uh, I, I thought this is an interesting um, element in your work, which is recurring. I, I mean, there was also something else, because these, these uh, airbrush uh, paintings, you, you see them uh, often yeah, on, on fun fairs, or you can see them on a truck. Uh, um, yeah, it's just like the airbrush aesthetic. And mostly they are like, very big and very colorful mm -hmm. and we just like it was the simple trick to make them sublime and you know something that is big and colorful you make small and black and white <laughs> and uh, and black and white always stands like for <laughs> for being more uh, artsy yeah 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 so and uh, yeah what about what about the canal video, I mean, that's um, also, that's the lowest, if talking about low or high or artsy and uh, kitschy. <laughs> yeah, so I, you really went into uh, No, we didn't switch. went there. No? <laughs> no, 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 we didn't went there because uh, it's, it's, it's just a film camera that controls and, the yeah. sewer system. Yeah. And uh, it's something that we, by coincidence, yeah. we saw in the street. They have like this, the, the car and the same. Kanal Arbeit. Uh, yeah, yeah Kanal. Yeah. And they have just like for, for, um, for testing if mm -hmm. they have cracks or not. Yeah. They send the camera. But is it on a wire? Or uh, no, it's it? on a motor. It's on a motor. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it goes on a motor, and it has an, uh, on the end. It has a wire for sending the signal. Uh, then it had a signal because, yeah. like, in the, it was like really like in the beginning of video. Uh, the video camera always had a wire. Now it's going with uh, with funk. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So uh, for those who don't know the work, it is a film. You project. Um, it's like a, a big video film and uh, it's very hypnotic, uh, mm -hmm. psychedelic even mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's just always... Other people say boring. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And uh, you, but if you if you have uh, I mean uh, enough time and stay, you might see uh, rats or yeah. Or there is one. There yeah. is one. One because also rats live in the sewer system. Sure. So uh, and um, the people who are doing this for for the city of Zurich, they are two guys. Yeah. Then we talked with them and said, oh, this is very what it is, and they explained us. And we went to the um, uh, to the sewer system controlling office of the city, <laughs> and they have all these videotapes mm -hmm. uh, because they have to look. They, sometimes when they see a crack, uh, then they go back to the one year so they can see when the crack happened. Mm -hmm. And so we asked, like, if we can have. Um, if we can have this material mm -hmm. and they said, yeah, we can use it. Uh, the only thing that we uh, had to um, deal with it, they didn't want it because they always say the street and the number of the house where you are. So they, they didn't want that, that you know, oh, this is 
underneath the National Bank or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> it was like dart and shoots. Yeah. Uh, so we had to deal with, uh, uh -huh, so yeah. we had to, to make to, a simple uh, yeah. trick yeah. that uh, you don't know where you are, <laughs> but of course it's the whole system. And what was also super nice is uh, you have a little bit the history of, of video mm -hmm. because the first ones are in black and white and then the, and really really low resolution and then and then of course each year they they bought new technique new equipment mm -hmm. so it's also this gives gives kind of a variety yeah. in this in this boring yeah. uh, hypnotic <laughs> thing yes <laughs> yes <laughs> so um, i have other another picture this is a I, I couldn't find the title of this. It's something like uh, Rockets and Moon? Or? It, uh, it's Moonraker and Moonraker. It's, um, it's like, it's like a, a film still of the James Bond movie. Ah, yeah, um, yeah I mean, very much so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's obvious. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Where uh, uh, the bad guys they have a they have a rocket inside of a volcano. Yeah. And um, and uh, yeah, and then it's like it, it was it's a Cold War movie, you know, like mm -hmm. between. Uh, so it's like the Americans and the Russians they are already in space, and then the bad guy um, he has this rocket and he goes up and makes a sabotage on one on two and then the Americans think they are these are the Russians and the Russians think these are the Americans and this would provoke a world war yeah. which makes the bad guy happy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah this is like yeah. more or less the yeah. story yeah. and then James Bond yeah. can. But th so this is uh, for those who didn't recognize, it's uh, one photo of the series uh, Wursterie. So that uh, very first collaboration between uh, David and you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, we, we look into a fridge and uh, it's twilight. Mm -hmm. But we know, uh, I mean, it's what happens if we close the door. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it goes off. <laughs> <laughs> so you saw, I, I was really looking for a darkness in your, yeah, in your yeah, work because yeah. uh, your work is immense and uh, I had to uh, edit <laughs> down and uh, find a red thread mm -hmm. to, um, mm -hmm. to the surlis and uh, rat and bear. So now we also have a picture of rat and bear who sit uh, are sitting under a lamp in uh, Hollywood or Los Angeles. Yeah, this is from from the first movie, um, the first rat and bear movie. Uh, that gerings the der Widerstand, der Widerstand um, which so. we normally see on this screen. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you visit uh, and yeah. which like the costumes are, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Which uh, uh, in in the first movie they uh, yeah they are what's the English word for taugenichtse? Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, Taugenichts. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Good for nothing. <laughs> they are good for nothings. Yeah. Too good for nothings, and um, and uh, so yeah, they they try different things, and um, but not even <coughs> they don't not even try it hard. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, yeah, uh, a little bit of all the egos <laughs> of us in that moment. Uh, uh, so. Uh, and then they went, and everything they do, with everything they do, they fail. 
uh, also because they don't really try hard enough. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then they go through a dark moment. I mean, they are also, it's not the darkness not only exists when you make the light <laughs> out. You can have also dark moments in full sunlight. <laughs> so yeah, they are like super depressed because like nothing, nothing really works and uh, they are depressed. And um, so this makes them um, think about why everything is so miserable. Uh, and then they start to make these drawings, the, the Ordnung und Reinlichkeit, uh, and which are diagrams for... And it was a little booklet like this, yeah. and it cost five francs, I remember, yeah. at the, when you bought a ticket for mm -hmm. the, the film, to see the film, you could buy it. No, no, you have to pay it extra. It was not included. No, in no, we have to, you paid extra <laughs> five <laughs> francs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, because we, it, the idea is was like to make a real movie. Yeah. And if you do a real movie, you also need merchandise. <laughs> so this was a kind of the merchandise of the Red and Bear movie. And uh, which also we always insisted that this is not. Ah, oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. This, this is the Ordnung und Reinlichkeit. So with the postage and. Uh, and this is a postage and. Black and white. Also, uh, here is Red and Bear, it says the two authors. So we were, we wanted to make sure that this is the work. <laughs> this is not a work of fish device, but from <laughs> Red and Bear. So, <laughs> so our alter egos made these. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and it was uh, already an amazing uh, idea to explain the world, to order the world, and in the film also you you go into an uh, art uh, gallery and uh, yeah. there also you uh, comment uh, what modern art is. I mean, yeah, I mean it's it's yeah. Yeah, but this is not so much like comment about like modern art. Maybe, I mean, we know these kind of diagrams from Joseph Beuys. He, he made like this kind of uh, call or uh, even more it would be uh, Rudolf Steiner mm -hmm. you know, who made That's like a, a yeah. lot of, this, of <laughs> these diagrams and and yeah, it's just like this wish to explain yourself, to make a plan of life. Which you topped then in uh, 83 with uh, clay figures, plötzlich diese und plötzlich diese Übersicht, mm -hmm. which I think was about one or two years before Jürgen Habermas published um, Die neue Unübersichtlichkeit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, for me, it always was. Plötzlich diese Übersicht was the Swiss uh, postmodern Big Bang. The exhibition. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I was not looking it like <laughs> that because, like that, it, like the that that, that switch from modernism to postmodernism, it happened before. I mean, for our generation, uh, it was not. It was already. It yeah, was the Big already Bang also had to be prepared. Somehow, okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway. Yeah. yeah. No, but this, I think the the first moment that this was like so formulated, it was as I think with with Venturi, and learning from Las Vegas. You know, it was it was like. Uh, it was really more coming from architectural mm -hmm. theory mm -hmm. than uh, it was formulated. I mean, in, in art, it was around, and we, Venturi never could do yeah, this work was, without. But Venturi Shea. had his uh, inspiration from the Beatles, also. Sure, sure. Saying it was pop. Uh, yeah. this culture is this is also intelligent and is art or culture uh, which is um, yeah. uh, serious and uh, yeah, 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 has yeah. to be looked at. Yeah, and, and suburbia. And suburbia means often also like the low, you know, it's not like it's a yeah, yeah. high and low, yeah. that was also yeah. one of these terms that was really discussed, but this was 
all like in the mid 60s mm -hmm. this was like uh, so when we we went uh, when we did suddenly this overview this belonged already like let's say to the intellectual repertoire yeah so yeah, <laughs> 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 uh, so, mm, yeah. So, so maybe it was more like uh, an echo of the Big Bang <laughs> than the Big Bang, <laughs> something, yeah, yeah. Yes, but uh, I mean, it's, it's still, uh, it, it was uh, such an extraordinary, extravagant, um, really überbordende uh, uh, exhibition, no? and, and yeah. stays still in, in the memory. Yeah, uh, but I mean, visually yeah. it was that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, shall we uh, slowly come to an end? Uh, do you... I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on. <laughs> no, to, go, to come to an end, I'm yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs>